so welcome to day 10 and today the theme is miracles and victory so we are doing a kriya that is called kriya for elevation and this kriya is good for increasing the prana in the body so it cleanses the chakras and balances balances the chakras and it also um, exercises the spine to make it more uh, flexible uh, it is uh, in total it boosts your energy uh, and after the kriya we will do a relaxation and then a meditation to um, develop your sensory system and that is where I'm going to read a piece from the manual that Yogi Bhajan he told. Um, it's about how we can transition from the uh, Pisian age to the Aquarian age. And uh, it's also a very powerful meditation. Um, but first of all we'll start with the tuning in process and then the warm up exercises. And then we'll start the Kriya. So come into a cross-legged seated position and just straighten your spine and roll your shoulders down and relax the shoulders. And then close your eyes and focus on the third eye and turn your focus inward. And use this time to connect to your breathing, connect to your core, your center. And just feel yourself. And feel your inhale all the way down in your stomach expanding. And feel your stomach contracting on an exhale. Making the breath long and deep. And then start rubbing your palms together and place them at your heart center on the sternum. And then we'll tune in with Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo three times. Bow to my inner wisdom. <coughs> Deeply inhale to begin. Om Namo Guru De
apply root lock and exhale relax your hands on your knees <coughs> Let's start the warm-up exercises. Let's start the Sufi grind, rolling your upper body in circles. Inhale forward and exhale back. slowly change the direction inhale forward exhale back Just inhale and come into center, holding the breath. And 
change direction still inhale as you draw your shoulders up exhale as they come down Place your feet together, the soles of your feet, and grab your toes and start flapping your knees up and down, gently releasing your hip area here. Just let the breath be natural. Make sure that your spine is straight. Feel your hips release. and increase the speed of the exercise to really activate the spinal fluid that nourishes your, your nervous system, your brain, your mind.
push yourself down into child's pose onto your heels let your forehead rest on the ground Inhale deeply and push yourself up on the exhale and just come into easy pose, a cross-legged seated position and we will start the Kriya, the Kriya for elevation. The first exercise is called Ego Eradicator. That is uh, well known in Kundalini Yoga, this exercise. You are having your arms up in a 60 degrees angle here and your thumbs are pointing up and then your other fingers is just touching the top of the palms here. And just through the entire exercise, make sure that your arms are straight and it's, it's in 60 degrees, so not too low and not too high here. And you are using the breath of fire and make sure that you are using your stomach pumping the navel in and out. So come into ego, eradicator, close your eyes, focus on the third eye and start with a fire. This opens the lungs, brings the hemisphere of the brain to a state of alertness and charges the magnetic field. Keep going 30 seconds more. Inhale and let the thumbs touch each other over the heads. And let the arms stay up as you exhale. And then apply root lock. Inhale and relax your arms down. And then grab your shin on the foot here, on the leg. And then you do spinal flex. So, and on an inhale, come forward. On an exhale, back. And just let the heads be still. Ten. 
turn their focus inward. Focus at their third eye. Inhale and come into center. And exhale. Then grab your shoulders. Let the thumbs be on the, the behind your back. The fingers in front and then do the spinal twist from left to right inhaling left exhaling right
Inhale, come into center. And exhale. The next exercise is life nerve stretch. So you're straightening your legs out in front of you. And then on an inhale, you are lengthening the spine, raising the arms up. And then you're bending from your hip, moving forward. And if you can, place your hands in a finger lock using the index finger to grab the toes and press on the, the nail with the thumb. Or you can grab your shin here. And then continue on the exhale to come down. And then when you inhale, you're coming up again until your arms are straight. Then exhale, inhale up. And just keep moving in this. And you're letting your head be the last to, to come up and to come down. And then inhale and stay up and hold the breath and still staying up exhale and hold the breath out inhale and relax Then we'll do a modified Maha Mudra. And that is, you are straightening your right leg out in front of you and sitting on the left heel. And then again, grab your toe, your ankle or your shin. And then on the exhale, come down. Deeply into the stretch. And now you're just staying down here and breathing. And in this posture, start breath of fire.
and stay in this posture and inhale. Exhale. And stretch yourself forward and hold the breath. And inhale. And come up and switch legs. Sitting on the right heel. Grabbing the toe, the ankle or the shin. <laughs> or knee. <laughs> and just move forward into the stretch on your exhale. And in this posture, start breath of fire. And stay in the posture, inhale. And stay and exhale. And hold the breath out. And inhale. And come up. Both legs out. Shake. Then we'll do another life nerve stretch. But this time you are spreading your legs out. And then you're grabbing the toes or the ankles or the shin. And then you're inhaling up and exhaling, coming over to the side. Inhaling up, exhale, come over to the other side. So inhale, center, exhale. Just bending from the waist Inhale, come into center. 
and then on the exhale move down come up on the inhale down on the exhale And then inhale, come up, straighten your spine. And come forward on the exhale. Holding the breath out. Inhale and relax. Can take your legs together, shake them a little bit. And then come on to your uh, come on to your stomach here. Just your elbows tucked into your body, and we'll do what a cobra pose. So, on an inhale, you're pushing yourself up, and you can stay with the arms bent, or you can come all the way up. But hold the posture here and start breath of fire. If it's too much pressure on your lower back, you can also stay on your under arm, on your elbows. And then inhale and arch the spine to its maximum. Exhale, stay here and apply root block. And inhale and relax, calm down. Stay on your stomach, turn your head to one side and just relax here. Just relax your arms by the side.
Inhale and exhale. Place your hands by your chest and gently push yourself up here. Come into a seated cross-legged position. And we'll do shoulder shrugs. So on, just let your knees rest on your knees. And on the inhale, you take the shoulders up. And on the exhale, you relax. This opens the gate to the higher centers of the brain. And stimulates and balancing the upper chakras. Really feel your body release on the exhale. Inhale up. Place your right ear at your right shoulder and start making your head go in circles. Inhale back and exhale forward. Focus on the third eye. This is your time on the mat. So really connect with you, your inner being. change direction
Inhale and come into center. And exhale. For the last exercise of the Kriya, come on to your knees and your heels, sitting in rock pose. And we'll do the Sat Kriya, three minutes. So you're uh, using the mantra Sat Nam, and on Sat, you pull the navel in. And you relax on now. Sat now. And the the fingers are interlaced except the index finger and the thumbs are crossing. The women cross the left over the right and the men the right over the left. Take the arms up and hook your arms into your ears, into your head here. And focus on the third eye and start. Sat nam, 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 sat Nam 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 sat let the arms stay up inhale and squeeze your legs your buttocks really squeeze the muscles Let them stay, but exhale. Apply root lock on this exhale. 
visualizing their energy spiraling up the spine all the way up onto the top of the head inhale and relax and just come onto your back for the deep relaxation A deep relaxation allows you to enjoy and consciously integrate the mind-body changes which has been brought through this Kriya during this practice. It allows you to sense the extensions of the self through the magnetic field and the aura and allows the physical body to deeply relax.
and slowly start coming back into your body moving your toes your fingers and start making circles with your feet and your hands <coughs> And then just bend one leg and come over to the side, stretching the arm, looking towards the opposite arm. <coughs> and really breathe into this cat stretch. And slowly come into center. and chain sides really feel the stretch and come into center <coughs> And rub your palms and the soles of your feet, really stimulating the nerve endings. And then grab the knees and roll a couple of times on your spine. And when you're ready, come up to easy pose. And make yourself comfortable so you can sit and meditate. <laughs> Do <clears throat> we'll do the meditation for developing the sensory system. So you're sitting in easy pose and your chin is slightly tucked in so that you create a neck lock so the energy can go up through the spine. And, uh, the mudra, the hand position, is the left hand is on your chest, on the center of your chest, on the heart. And the right arm is up along the side of the body <coughs> and only the the index finger is pointing up here and then you just sit here <coughs> taking in the lecture by Yogi Bhajan about the sensory system <coughs> just let your breathing be normal The sen self sensory system and the transition from the Piscean to the Aquarian age. In the next 12 to 14 years, you will be needed by the world. It does not matter who one is today or to whom one belongs, people's minds are going to go empty. In the Piscean Age, the main need was for knowledge, for creative legacy. <laughs> That's why in the Piscean Age, sex was taboo. It was monitored, matured, glorified. Sex and sensuality were considered the primary attractions. Beauty was physical and people <coughs> pursued each other. Sexual intercourse was the ori orientation of relationship 
and it reached the point of obnoxious duality. Perversion became very prominent. <coughs> duality won't work anymore, but the time is changing, <coughs> and people are looking towards fulfillment of the self through purity, individuality, and reality. They don't want to practice duality anymore. That's why you will feel <clears throat> that's why you will find few marriages. <coughs> Sex will not be the attraction. A sensory system will, <coughs> will develop a new system where the individual will find him or herself complete. Communication will be humongous. Everybody will have access to all knowledge. With a push of the button, you can get any information you want. The whole world will be at your disposal. The obsession with sex will have no place. One will not look for satisfaction through physical intercourse, it will be automatic that one will find satisfaction through the self-sensory system, which people will develop in the coming 50 years. The foundation is being laid now because the cusp period is 1991 to 2012 for the age of Pisces to go and the age of Aquarius to come. We have already gone through nine years of this 21 years. So what is the personal sensory system? There will be no need for cosmetic makeup. People will be open straight simple and the beauty will be internal not external men and women are going to reach out with such dignity such devotion <coughs> such an elevated loftiness of self that the beauty of human character will be bewitched not only the one who is willing will be enjoyed and realizing but their realization would be so profound that no destructive temptation by another person will work. What we are leaving behind. The Piscean Age was the ugliest age. It was an era in which the female was rooted out from her roots and exploited to the brink and to the brim by men. Male-female relationship didn't have any strength. It didn't have any character. It didn't have any taste. So female in the past century gave birth to the most fearful, insecure, impotent or oversexed men and sexual disorder was worse than ever before in the past 3000 years. In humankind, men were sexually, sexually interfered. They did not have the power of endurance, and they could not carry the love and the polarity of the female. In other words, men and women could not become a unit. Their sexual habits were so shallow that the Akashic record did not even record them. Men were the product of being worthless and useless. Their sexual intimacy had no depth. The men produced in the last century, whom we call great, wanted to indulge in the power of destruction. That's why we created the atom bomb, the hydrogen bomb, and the smart bombs. 
We had two wars and we killed more people in the name of religion than anything else. Religion became not reality, but an ugly fantasism. The working God. The ugliest thing that happened in the last century is that men started finding God outside himself. Man forgot that God is the working God. Katapurk, which Nanik said, works and breeds in us. It's part of us. It's not separate. We were blind to God's presence everywhere. The only way to survive today is through the insanity of the ego. Not ego. Ego has a rational reference. But the insanity of the ego. Man's ego is like a snake which spews poison at you like a fountain. It doesn't mean anything. It just scares you, that's all. People have become limited, small, squeezed to a point of just physical existence. Today we are six billion ugly ducklings of the human race living on the planet and we have no quality no quantity, no character, and no commitment. Look at our character. It's wrapped in lies and inconsistency. We truthfully say things which are not true. We dramatically say things which are not true. And we do the ugliest thing on the planet. We build a power which surrounds the individual. How many houses? How many boyfriends? How many money do we have? We end up adding on dirt or termite heap of dirt. In character we have to become very shallow. We have become very shallow. How many and how big are our TVs? How many cars do we have? You never hear a person talking about how much satisfaction, how much containment, how much con contentment, how much character and how much realization he has. You won't hear it these days. Who had sex with who? Who wants who? Who chased who? Who is nude? Who is more nude? Do you understand? There is a competition going on. You see all our magazines. It's a human joke. And when a race of humans starts making mockery of themselves openly and obnoxiously nothing is scared so this is the state of affairs and it has to go on for 12 more years of this cusp period and it will be bad for us building the foundation of the new age my idea to present to present this to you is that many of you will try to reach out to help people or help yourself and you will have something to understand it's called building the foundation of the new age the age of aquarius will be the age of experience where only people of experience will be liked respected worshipped talked to and understood it's not a matter of of how young or old you are how white you are or how black you are. Religion, as it has been known, has become absolutely obsolete. Because in the past 5,000 years, religion has been teaching you to redeem your soul. Soul is already redeemed. What you should redeem is your being cheap, shallow, worthless, useless not true to your world, not true to your commitment, and not true to your character. That's what you should redeem. The majority of the world is nothing but show business. You put on a show, and spirituality is nothing but a show. No human believes that they are a fact of life, a fact of existence, that they are real, that they are born in the image of God, that most Magnificent Allah, most infinite God, Jehovah, most pure wise Lord, Buddha, 
whatever you want to call your God, has created you in his own image, and this is it. So God in the new age is called he, she, it, he, she, and it. And if you don't understand the totality of God and he, she, and it, then you are screwed. You can put silver leaf or gold leaf on it, that is still what you are. So you are wrapped in gold, your wealth, and you think you are covered, you are wrong. You are wrapped in silver and you think you are shining and bright and you can make a fool of others, you are deadly wrong. The fact is that this is not, nothing more beautiful, more worthy, and more conscious than you. The time has come of self-values and the question is not to be or not to be. The statement is to be to be. I am, I am. The time has come not to search for God but to be God. Time is not to worship God but to trust and dwell in the working God. As this is coming through me, it is cleansing me. If you are not listening and only hearing, you are not getting it. But if you are listening, it will go into you. You have to come to the awareness of how bad and unfortunate we have made this world as ugly as possible and how beautiful actually God created it. We are purely enemies of God because God within us is in pain and there is no God outside us. Each one is the manifestation of God. So it won't work to create God by making a stone God. Every grain of sand is God, and we have to have our subtle body or sophisticated self to see it. In reality, you are bound of molecules living by the pranic body. You are nothing more, nothing less. As long as the psychic will not merge in you equally in balance, you will have no awareness. Human existence is a combination of the pranic body and the psychic energy, which is the universe, prakriti, and creation in property. When you have that state of mind, you are clean and clear. You stop searching, you start practicing. The oddness in you becomes even and your flow becomes a vast of the universe and sometimes beyond the universe. You have the authentic reach to yourself. I don't want anybody because I want everybody. This concept is very difficult. I don't want to be I. I don't want to be we. I want to be just as it is. And my run is with the flow of the psychic of the universe as it takes me, as it moves me, as it desires me and will stop cutting corners and come to real existence and it's not long from now. Any person who thinks he is great may be nothing because the information age is so powerful and so knowledgeable and so acknowledgeable and so understandable that nothing can work. We will not be competent to cheat each other but we can help and deal with each other as equal. There is no beautiful, no ugly. The love of existence, of our life and of our breathing will be in need of the flow of the psychic in us. Therefore we can be a real combination of self within the self. And the sensory system which will develop automatically out of us will be your archangel protecting us and glorifying us. Living by the self-sensory system. Those who hustle and hazel and move and want will just die suffering. They will not get anything. Now the time has come that you will have a meditative mind to wait and to see what comes to you. Your mind will direct you to work towards the right channels. You will meet the right people. Our future is now and our presence is our purity. We don't have to purify ourselves, we are pure. We simply have to not make it ugly. 
by diversing, by concoction stories, and by creating meaning, meaningless romance and fantasy, and imagining things which are zero. We'll master ourselves through our service, through our character, through our commitment, and the most powerful thing which people have, our grace. Our individual grace is the most wanted today, and our projection, which will give us satisfaction, fulfillment, and exultant, is our nobility. We will act noble, gracious, kind, and compassionate. These are our essential futures. Our creativity will be our sensory system, and through this sensory system will be overflowing with energy, touching the heart of people and feeling their feeling and filling their emptiness. We will act great and our flow will fulfill the gratefulness in the heart of others. It will be a new relationship. We will create a new humanity which will have the new sensory system and thus we will establish the age of Aquarius. This is the fun fundamental character you have to learn by heart. Take a deep inhale and hold the breath. And exhale. And another deep inhale. And hold it. Exhale. And the last deep inhale. And exhale. And just place your palms together at your heart center. And we will close the class with the long time sun. Projecting the love out to the world.
Satnam. 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 